My name is Erin Kinate. I'm Navajo and I'm American. The name Erin comes from my mother. She is Irish and German. And Ere in German means honor. So Erin means honors. My middle name, Ki, is uh, my Indian name, which is short for Ashkiyaje, which means boy. And my last name, Nate, uh, comes from my grandfather. Uh, his Indian name was Ethlegoth, which means walking leader in Navajo. But he was stripped of that name when he went to boarding school and was given the name Ed Lee because it was easy to say and easy to spell. When he got out of boarding school, he gave himself his name, Nate. It comes from a Navajo word meaning leader, not Ani. So uh, if you were to look at my, my whole name and its meaning, it would translate to the boy who leads with honorable deeds. I just keep remembering that, that I'm so lucky to have this part of my life, this, this life way that connects me to the earth. And I began to think, well, you know, I'm, I'm very lucky in that way to be indigenous. But I, I think about, well, what, what of my students that live in Española Valley? They don't have a community. Or if there is a community, it's, it's a very difficult one to live in. And I began thinking of ways, how, how, can I, how can I create a community or how can I be a part of a community that is in the city? How can I give myself to the community and pass on this greater sense of connection and awareness, share my views that it is completely necessary to feel all right in this world? How can I bring that? I found the answer in hip hop. Hip hop is a culture in itself. It parallels native culture in a lot of ways. Um, without trying to be native culture, it kind of already is so very similar. For example, when we dance, we get together, we dance in a circle and everybody's welcome. You'll be in a cypher circle and there will be black, white, brown, Hispanic, Asian, uh, Native American peoples all coming together to dance and to share in, the ener in each other's energy. I thought to myself, you know, well, maybe this is a way that I can share my deeper connection and, um, and be, you know, a driving force in our hip hop community. That's when I established this, the dance program here at the Pueblo of Powake Boys and Girls Club. I began to think, well, you know, it's, it's not something that I want to, I don't want to take from native culture because that's been done and commercialized. And I don't want to take from hip hop and because that's been done and commercialized, you know, and, and misrepresented what it's really all about. Naturally, as, as a Native American, I feel a disconnect between myself and my environment. When I grew older and sought out a deeper meaning, a deeper connection, looking at my own native roots was an obvious answer to me. I had been playing music for a long time and decided that I wanted to pursue the arts in my hometown. That's when I came across the Poe Arts Center. Here I learned traditional um, techniques and cultural artistry, working with master silversmith Fritz Casus, uh, who, who's also Diné, was a, a huge turning point in my life. Um, just seeing how, how serious he was with his work and where it could take you 
And also Sean Tafoya, he was, he's my teacher for Pueblo Pottery, um, definitely uh, showed me this, this um, art form that has been in my family for thousands of years again, you know. Um, so this is uh, my autobiographical piece called The Key. You know, you're searching for this key, the key to life, but key is also my middle name. So it's me finding my meaning. It starts out as a, a piece of graffiti. I thought of my, how, how did I become an artist? And I thought to my first moments of being a creator. And I remember having a crayon and dragging that crayon just across this what I call a vast plane of existence. Not, that's not really what it mattered. What it mattered was that I was bringing into being a vision. I started this piece by making simple st strokes of color and from there choosing colors. And from there lines became shapes and shapes became forms and forms became images and images tell the story. At a certain point, I, I began to realize that I was creating a timeline and that it was quite linear and that I wanted to get away from that uh, linear notion of time. And so be, I began to take my work into the third dimension into a more of a, a circular way of looking at time. It really helped me to solve a lot of my problems with identity and trying to be different, but also trying to be, just trying to be me, uh, figuring out who I was. So this, uh, this piece incorporates a lot of images from my native culture, but kind of seeing them in a different way that, that shows this, really shows the struggle between being stuck between two worlds. The drum is part of that, music is, is part of that, hip hop is part of that my purpose in life is to bring people together through the drum, through dance, through the art. I'm, I'm executing this watercolor piece. I'm kind of mimicking the, the studio period of Pueblo paintings. It's something really different than what I'm used to because I have to be so clean with everything, right? In order to, to get into that whole mode of thinking, I thought about how those painters were actually coming into the studio. I just imagined them being really clean, looking at the, the pieces there in such pristine condition. There's very few markings on, on a, such a wide open surface. So um, every day I come in, well, I wash my hands, I put my hair back, I put on my lab coat and clean up my space. And from there, I can kind of already just be in that mindset of um, this really clean work. Another thing that's different about this work than what I usually do is that the painters, they left signs that show they were using drafting tools, templates, compasses, and uh, and whatnot. Everything was measured out. Even if it wasn't perfect, there was always a balance. So I wanted to recreate that. In my work, I use tracing paper a lot, almost like an animator. And uh, I'll edit a, a piece, you know, by tracing it over and over until I get it exactly the way that I want. And so that you have this kind of idea of using templates, you know, or, or something to build off of. And it's funny when I uh, look at my, my grandfather's work closely, there's obvious use of uh, tracing like a stencil. And it's something that's really common in graffiti work. Some people will criticize you for using um, uh, stencils, that it's kind of a cop out and um, using uh, projectors, but all of these things are forms of using templates. Because this isn't my style, I just really want to get it right to see what it, what it might look like. 
I put the file into a digital scanner, which I've kind of rigged up onto a, an easel for an overhead projection. So here I have the image projected. And this was kind of a rough guideline. You can see the, the rainbow. Uh, that's how I trace the rainbow here. I would keep this piece of paper here so I can kind of go back and forth between the image that I want finally on the page and the image that I kind of rendered digitally. Um, the character has an ax in his hand and uh, he's swinging his ax down onto that water pipe as a form of resistance to conforming to this infrastructure provided by our government. In researching the importance of you know having a connection to to water and talking with with elders they said that there were, was a time when there was resistance of these modern amenities and i would hear these stories of um, you know them trying to bring in pipeline water and the elders actively resisting it's a confrontation of some sort but also a resolution and the reason why I'm painting that is so that, you know, maybe people will think, well, you know, what if we had listened to that resistance? What, what if we had done something about it and um, thought about the ways in which we're treating our sacred resources? Once I project the image onto, onto the paper, I begin to trace it with pencil very lightly. And then uh, once I have the basic outline, um, I turn off the projector and erase the pencil lines so that there's just such a slight outline of the character. And from there, I mean, I already know this character. I've drawn him probably, I don't know, probably 50 times now through all of the tracing and digital and now on the on the paper so he's ready to come to life this is definitely just the first part of a series of works i'd like to show that back then the elders were saying something and we might not have listened and who knows if it was for the better or for the worse but now they are saying well they were right they were right about that and now they're speaking with urgency about keeping that the farming tradition alive. So that will be the next piece that I do.